ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम ध्यायामो ध्यायामोथलावगुंधनवतीं तेजो मयी नैष्ठिकी स्निपाकलोकिनी भगवती मंदस्मदश्रीमुखी वात्सल्यामृतवर्षिणी सुमधुर संगीतनालापिनी श्यामांगी मधुसिक्तसू வாட்ஸ்அப் குரூப் uh getting the zoom and anything else please uh don't hesitate to contact me uh, over email or whatsapp thank you let me invite jeet sir yeah namaste everybody uh, so this is uh, this will be an introductory class uh and uh, i'm answering the duration as uh, 30 minutes 30 to 40 minutes like that uh, because uh, it's a kind of uh, light weight entry into the uh the entire corpus of knowledge uh, called the uh, rigveda uh so uh, i just want to know like uh, how many of you have purchased the, the book uh, the the reverse of rigveda uh maybe if you can express uh, in some manner or you can type in the chat like that so uh yeah almost uh, everyone but yeah right so i will just uh, introduce the book because uh, most of the topics i have been covering uh, we will go through the uh, the sequence of the book uh, like uh, with an introduction to rigveda and then introduction introduction to the rigvedic geography like that we will slowly progress into the deeper aspects of rigveda so it is good to have the the book uh, the 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 reverse of rigveda the book uh, it has if it is purchased it will be very very much useful uh, that is one point i want to make and uh, uh, second thing is uh, uh, like i assume uh, that uh, like uh, all the uh, listeners uh, have uh, some familiarity with the uh, rigveda like uh, not in terms of details but Uh, some of the things like uh, it it is uh, having 10 mandalas etc so uh, even if it is not there it's fine because uh, we are actually uh, having a kind of a very base basic uh, level starting into the rigveda including with structure etc so but uh, any kind of prior information about rigveda uh, will be of uh, a very at most uh, use uh so this uh, today's topic i'll just uh, uh share the screen and move the slides so it will be easier uh going through the slide because as part of the plan i have uh, structured the uh the, the, the today's topic and uh, today's class and also the other sub uh, the what are the subsequent classes uh, we are uh, like uh, having this as uh, as this at the start says it's a course in the geography of rigveda and uh, uh, it's based on the the book uh, the reverse of rigveda which was published uh, uh, last year and uh, this year it there is a continuity of that same book the geography of ramayana is published this year so uh, that is how it is uh, structured and then currently i'm writing the third book on the geography of geography of mahabharata so this is a kind of a trilogy uh, with a lot of interconnection between the books and uh, uh, these three uh, text primarily like the rigveda uh, ramayana and mahabharata have a lot of interconnections and together uh, tells about the vedic aitihasik geography so it, it typically it is not uh, in isolation but everything all the foundation is in the rigveda geography so that is how it has been structured like this so uh, just in the next slide i can familiarize with the book uh, so this is the the reverse of rigveda uh, the front cover of the book and 
uh, you can purchase it from Amazon, uh, like uh, as a, uh, or it can be uh, like uh, based on other, like Notion Press, etc. And both in print as well as in the as a ebook format, it is available. So as you can see, uh, where to buy the book? That question is answered here. Uh, where it is available, both in print. Uh, internationally also like in UK, U, uh, USA, etc. And then uh, into the ebook format in Amazon, Kindle, uh, then Google Play Store, iBook, etc. Like that. Uh, and there are some additional material uh, like the into websites uh, where the English translation of the Rig Veda is available in the ancient voice, uh, wiki.com uh, uh, website. Uh, the you can note down the URL and then uh, some of the maps mentioned in the, the the book. This is a geographical maps you can see in the website that is uh, dharmadigital.in dot uh, in rivers of like that. So these are the kind of uh, additional resources for uh, uh, those people those who have books. And, uh, if I move a little further. Uh, so these are the kind of contents of the book. Uh, I'm not sure whether it is uh, readable. And uh, so basically, uh, the course is structured uh, in the in the same format of the the contents of the book. So, for example, today we will talk about the introduction. That is the chapter one. Uh, yeah, uh, so the introduction part is discussed today, and then uh, we have uh, the summary of the Rigveda chronology. Comes at the second chapter, that will be the next uh, next talk in the next week, uh, uh, next session in the next week. And then uh, we will talk about uh, the Rigvedic kings. So they are called the patrons, and they are the people, uh, they are the kings who support the rishis. And uh, because of the support of the rishis, uh, the king, uh, the support of the kings, the rishis are able to compose the Rigvedic kings. So, the Rigvedic kings, then Rigvedic rishis or the poets, and the Rigvedic devatas. So, we will uh, go through all the uh, three kind of key people who are part of the Rigveda. Uh, the devatas like Indra, Agni, etc. And then uh, the Rigvedic rishis means the Vasishta. Uh, Vishwamitra, Agastya, like that. And uh, with Vedic kings, means uh, the kings like Dibodasa, Sudasa, and then uh, Pratartana, and so many other kings like uh, uh, Prasadasyu, Purakutsa. And very interestingly, some, some of the kings familiar to you, like uh, uh, Shantanu, in Shantanu of Mahabharata, is mentioned in Rigveda, and then Sri Rama. Rama of Ma Ramayana is mentioned, yeah, like towards the end of the Rigveda. So these are the kings, uh, and then, as I mentioned, sages, and then the Devadas, like Indra, Agni, Varuna, Mitra, Ushas, uh, and then so many others, Parjanya, Pushan, all of these Devadas. And uh, from the chapter 6 onwards, that is our sixth session, we will start uh, understanding the Rigvedic rivers uh, like Saraswati, Ganga, Yamuna, Prashadvati, Apaya, and uh, so many others like Parishni, Sudhutri, Vitasta, Vipash. Like. And then uh, from the seventh uh, session onwards, we will be going deeper and deeper into the Rigvedic geography. Uh, like uh, it talks about uh, the, the, some places which are familiar in the Mahabharata, like Purushetra, it is mentioned in a different name in Rigveda. And then various other Rigvedic regions like uh, Saptasindhu, Sharyanavat, Gandharva region, Tikada, Matsya, Chedi. Some of this, uh, which are also found in the Itihasas, they are mentioned in the Rigveda. And then uh, we will go through the Nadis, uh, the rivers. So, like uh, some of them are that. Haryupya and Yavivati, some rivers in Haryana, then Ganga, then Saraswati, Prashadvati, Apaya, Vipash, Sudhutri, then Yamuna, Parishni, and then uh, Asikni, and there is a river name called Vivali, uh, which is also known as Vitasta. 
the Jalam river and the Sindhu river, Sarayu river. So there is a Sarayu mentioned in the Rig Veda, which is uh, different from the Sarayu mentioned in the Ramayana. So I will be talking about that. Like Ramayana Sarayu is in the east in the Uttar Pradesh. Uh, the Rig Vedic Sarayu is uh, like a tributary of uh, Sindhu, uh, which is now known as the Haro river and currently flowing in Pakistan. And then the rivers like Urjayanti, Sarabas, and then some local rivers of Haryana like Shifa, Anjasi, Tulusi, Virabatni. And then the Kabul River, the famous Afghanistan River, Kabul, and its tributaries like Rumu. And then there is a river in the north of uh, Kashmir like Anitapha. Then the, the, there are two rivers, Komati and Nahatni, which are tributaries of uh, Sindhu. And then Arjigiya and Sushoma, very famous for the Soma, that is uh, the Amrita uh, that is mentioned. And then the Rasa River, uh, very famous, very, uh, it's a kind of a, uh, interesting that this river is the Sindhu River, but it's a northern course of the river Sindhu, which is men mentioned as a heavenly river, the river flowing through the heavens. All these things are mentioned there. So the Sindhu is mentioned as a heavenly river because it flows to the north of Kashmir. Where the high Himalayan mountains are there. And then there are some northern uh, rivers uh, north, north of the Kashmir in the Ladakh, like Tatsama, Shushaktu, and Svetya, uh, all this. Um, then Amshumati is another river. There is a, uh, another name for uh, Yamuna. Then Marutvita and Vitasta, some rivers which are extinct now, not, not available, not dried up and gone. All this, then uh, this uh, Vatinavadi, Urnavadi, and Sirimavati, like that, so, some Ladakh rivers, all these things. And it mentions about Samudra. And uh, Samudra, uh, I mentioned in the Rigveda, is more, is mentioned larger, more than the river Saraswati. The Samudra or the ocean is mentioned. And it is southern ocean where the river Saraswati and uh, Sindhu drains. And the southern ocean, uh, for example, now when, when we say southern ocean, it is, uh, we, are, we are talking about ocean to the south of Kanyakumari. But in the Rigvedic period, uh, the southern ocean means the ocean where Saraswati and the Sindhu river drains. And that is the Gujarat or uh, ocean in the Gujarat. So the northern part of the Gujarat was a uh, shallow sea. The, now it is called Van of Kutch. Even that was an ocean and the, and during the period of uh, Rigvedic, uh, Rigvedic uh, period. So that time, uh, the Saraswati was draining into the Ran of Kutch, which was a sea. And uh, Sindhu was draining very close by in the Sindhu region. So that northern Gujarat region, whatever ocean is there, that is called the Southern Ocean. Uh, and uh, later, again, interesting, I'll just give some giveaways of the coming book. So this Northern Ocean, because of it was activity of the Rigvedic people, Later, it was known as the Chira Sagara and all the all the things. So that is a very significant, uh, uh, like for Mahabharata as well as Ramayana, this ocean is very significant. And in Ramayana also, we you know about the it mentioned mentioned about the Southern Ocean. So all these things are very significant. And this is also the reason why I am uh, teaching the Rigvedic geography uh, earlier than uh, uh, like uh, I teach the. Uh, Ramayana geography or Mahabharata geography because we need to understand the terminologies very clearly from the point to point of view of Rigveda to understand some of the uh, enigmatic uh, or strange references in uh, Ramayana and uh, Mahabharata regarding the oceans etc. And then uh, we will, uh, the 34th session, we will be talking about Rigvedic geography and archaeology. So whatever our findings in the Rigveda, we need to connect it with the um, archaeology, etc. And then we have the conclusions. Uh, this is how the, so it will be around 35th uh, session, which will be on the conclusion. Uh, so it is uh, definitely, there will be back-to-back uh, -back sessions of 35 or 40 sessions. And uh, it will be distributed in a one-year duration because we may have some gaps, like one week, when there may not be a session on a week or you may have an assignment kind of thing on a, in, a, in a particular week. So the 40 sessions, 35 to 40 sessions will be distributed into 52 weeks. And that is how it becomes a one year course. And uh, uh, this is another, uh, because uh, whenever we are referring some names in, in the, especially in the book, as well as in our course, 
we use this uh, diacritical for sanskritam uh, so that uh, whatever uh, words we are using they are uh, not confusing for example when you write rama in uh, english uh, definitely it can also be read as rama but when you use uh, sanskritam diacriticals then that uh, rama can be correctly written as uh, rama with the dirga etc so that is that significance of it and uh, this is another introductory part of the uh, rigveda so uh, when you are, this is a one this triangle is one way to uh, approach rigveda like uh, for example it is having uh, three uh, integral elements that is the primary and the most important is the devatas the entire rigveda is a praise of the rigvedic devatas like indra agni so each sukta is a praise of the rigvedic devatas so they are the the primary uh, like uh, elements in the rigveda one primary uh, like uh, subject of rigveda and then comes the poets so kavi or uh, rishi or the mantra drashta so we can call in different ways so they uh, have the mantras uh, that is they, they conceive the mantras in their mind uh, the mantras uh, which invoke the devatas and because of the invocation of the devatas uh, there will be a kind of positive uh, like significance like there is some positivity and uh, both the poets that is the the rishis as well as their patrons patrons means uh, the kings and chiefs in the rigvedic uh, period who were supporting the yagnas of the rishis so the the rajas they will support the yagnas of the rishis and the rishis uh, in turn praise the devatas and the devas uh, devatas will give, bless the, the rishis as well as the rajas so this is how the rigveda is structured and these are the kind of transactions that happens in the rigveda and it has got uh, 10552 rigs there is a variability of uh, four rigs so it can be 10556 based on the variations uh, in the in the rigveda but it's not very significant as far as geography is concerned uh, so we uh, we can assume there are 10552 rigs and uh, there are 1028 suktas so the rigs means for example in mahabharata and ramayana we call shloka so a shloka in in the rigveda the terminology is a rig uh, which is like whatever you are doing a recitation so that is called rigs the recitation uh, one single recitation uh, that we call it as a rig which is equivalent to a shloka in mahabharata or ramayana so two stan two lines or one one stan stan sa like and a lot of rigs constitute a sukta or a hymn so it is like a poetry so a single poem or a, a, a one sukta is like a single poem uh, it is the uh, in english we call it as uh, hymns and so there are 1028 uh, suktas in the rigveda and the suktas a lot of suktas collected together they are called a mandala or a book so rigveda is containing 10 mandalas or it is something like a 10 volume book means a book a large book which contains 10 volumes for example you know mahabharata is having 18 parvas ramayana have 7 kandas so some similarly rigveda have 10 mandalas so if i look at that way uh, 10 mandalas and each mandala having suktas and each sukta having rigs so this is the three three fold structure of the rigveda of course there are different other structures which i don't want to introduce right now but uh, for uh, for the kind of uh, clarity and simplicity we use the this particular structure uh, so of uh, mandala sukta and rigs or uh, you can say uh, book level the poet poem level and the stanza level that is the kind of uh, structure and uh, uh, basically our subject which is the geography or chronology of rigveda is not directly not directly visible in the rigveda because that is the reason why uh, after so many years of studies less number of people focused on it so the geography and chronology of the rigveda they are invisibly present inside the rigveda but uh, when you only focus and analyze it you you discover them so that is why the the field of study of geography and chronology of rigveda originated only in the last 200 years if i if it is uh, put correctly before that the, there was no no study of uh, geography or chronology of rigveda there was traditional studies on rigveda which is 
the vyakarana uh, so the, the the grammar of rigveda the chandas of rigveda that is the vritta the all the different meters of the poetry anushtib drishtab gayatri all these meters were studied uh, the meaning of the uh, rigveda the words in the rigveda etymology this was uh, all these things were studied but the geography and chronological study of the rigveda originated in the last uh, 200 years so that's another point uh, i have to make and then uh, there is a, here is an important concept related to rigveda so uh, as per our tradition the rigveda is considered as apaurusheya so the meaning uh, which is attributed to the word apaurusheya is basically uh, it is eternal or it is uh, created at the uh, like universal origin etc so this is basically we have to understand it as a kind of um, figurative uh, way uh, because uh, one reason is because uh, in the rigveda you have uh, uh, mention of uh, names of the rivers place names names of the kings uh, and then names of uh, rishis everything so um for example if you want to say river saraswati for example so saraswati river uh, is a river on the flowing in the haryana so you have the universe has to be created and in the universe you have this uh, galaxies and then uh, the uh, sun is a third generation star in the galaxy so after two generations of stars the sun is born and then the gas clouds and dust around sun that will coalesce into different planets and in uh, so 13.5 billion years ago the universe is created around 4 billion years ago the earth was created and the earth had uh, underwent a lot of uh, changes uh, plate plate tectonics etc happened and then uh, india as a landmass formed and only after that around 10000 years to 20000 years ago the river saraswati uh, slowly shaped up and uh, uh, only in the 5000 years it has the current shape so this is the kind of dynamism that has happened in the river saraswati and the rigveda is capturing the that last uh, you know five, uh, the, the kind of state of uh, the uh, saraswati river uh, from around uh, 5000 uh, to around 4000 years uh, or 4000 or 3000 years uh, that is the kind of uh, rigveda captures uh, the saraswati which is flowing very uh, with a very high flow in the 5000 years ago and the later books like mahabharata captures it uh, around 2000 bc uh, which are like uh, in a partially dried up state so there is a kind of uh, time and place connection to rigveda but then how do you reconcile the apaurishya concept so there are three ways so this is how i reconcile the apaurishya concept of the tradition with whatever geographical and uh, chronological analysis of rigveda which is our subject so for example Uh, there is a concept of space time continuum uh, wherein time is a direction uh, so when when you consider it that way everything is an instantaneous present the, the universe creation to formation of saraswati 5000 years ago everything is a static uh, eternal presence in a four dimensional space time continuum so in that way you can say that as far as uh, brahman is concerned everything happened at the same time then uh, there is a, that uh, apurishya can be considered like uh, you can actually understand the apurishya in that manner so uh, when we say the rigveda is created it, it we have to consider it in that manner if in, in the case of a space time continuity where time is a direction like uh, forward backward etc or left or right upward downwards uh, in that kind of scenario there is no sensation of the flow of time and then that that word become correct so uh, that is the realm of the consciousness which is uh, beyond the flow of time etc so there when you when a rishi is immersed in such a kind of a consciousness uh, time stands still when basically it, it is, there is a kind of uh, uh, the consciousness get attached or get uh, freed from the 3d space time 3d space constraint constraint and become a time invariant and then you can experience that kind of a apurishayatva etc another way of looking at is the knowledge inside the rigveda so the rigvedic verses contain saraswati or like it mentioned the, like partially mentioned about kurukshetra etc as a varapratyabhya 
some different names. But the knowledge contained in the Rigveda got distilled into the Brahmana, Saranikas, and Upanishads. And in Upanishads, whatever information that it is not talking about any uh, or it, this particular knowledge I am putting in, like Prajnana Brahma, insight is Brahman, I, I am Atman Brahman, that is, this self is Brahman, Tattva Masi, this, that essence is you, Aham Brahmasti, I am Brahman. So these are the Upanishad Vakyas. So they are a power because they, it is not related to time or space. It is applicable for any time in the future, present or past. So these, these uh, Upanishad Vakyas, they slowly get to emerge from the uh, Vedic or Vedic uh, information. That in their entire information, they, they got uh, uh, slowly distilled or uh, transformed. So like milk, milk turns into curd, curd uh, turn, uh, turns into butter, butter turns into ghee. So the Vedic knowledge, uh, the Vedic or Vedic knowledge transformed into Brahmanas, Aranidas and Upanishad. And all these uh, great Vakyas that came to us. And these Vakyas, because they are not connected to time or space, not talking about anything like a local river or about a local king. Uh, so they, these are all like eternal, eternally true and they are a power share. So this is one way of looking at the power share. And then a, a, a brief uh, understand, way to understand the, the Rig Veda is the Rig Vedic Anukramani. Uh, so the Anukramani is something which uh, many people don't focus. For example, if you go to uh, the English translation of the Rig Veda uh, of uh, any of the new translators, they are not translating the Anukramani. So the, this particular Anukramani is uh, mostly unknown to many of the people who are familiar with the Rig Veda. They seldom look into it. So the, this is a kind of a meta structure that is built into the Rig Veda, where it talks about every Sukta. And for each Sukta, it talks about the Devata, which, who is a, which, uh, which, the Devata referred in that Sukta, the primary Devatas referred in that Sukta. And it mentioned about the poet or the composer or the Rishi who has composed uh, or seen that Sukta in his mind. So you have these all the things. And then you have meter, that is the Vritta or the Chandas, and the Gayatri, Pankti, all these names. Uh, there is a lot of uh, Vrittas. Uh, that are used in the Rig Veda. So the, you can see every Sukta have uh, four in type of information. The, 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 the Sukta number, in which mandala and which uh, is it is and which is the Sukta number. There is a sequential order of the Suktas. Uh, so you can actually refer to a Sukta by two digits, two numbers. 1.09 means the Sukta is in the mandala one, uh, it is in the first Sukta. 1.29 means it is in the mandala one, 29th sutta. Or 8.85 uh, means 8th mandala, 85th sutta. Like that. And uh, the devata is also referred there. So, sutta numbers, devata, and uh, the rishi who has authored it. Like the first sutta is Madhuchandas Vaishamitra, a descendant of Vishamitra. Then Sunak Sheva Ajigatri, another uh, disciple of Vishamitra. Uh, uh, for this uh, this mandala, then Krishna Angirasa and Angirasa Gotra. And this is the, this first uh, this sutta, for example, it is in Gayatri meter, another is in Pamti meter, another again in Gayatri, then you have Trishtu, Manushtu, uh, and uh, so many other uh, meters. We will we will actually, in the part of our course, we will learn all of them. 